Hey folks, Uniservo here, and I've got a weird tube that maybe one of you guys knows a little bit about, because I know almost nothing. This guy here. I purchased this at the last Kutztown show, what was that, a month or so ago? And uh, I don't know what it is. Well, obviously we can tell that it's made by Raytheon but I cannot find any number on it. Now, I did try the usual tricks of breathing on it, putting it in the freezer to see if the condensation forms on, on the whatever ink lettering there might be. Also, the rub it in your hair. Yes, the oil in your hair sometimes can make it. So those numbers just pop out a little bit. But in this case, I don't know. I don't see anything. I magnifying glass, looked around for it. Any sort of numbers, it would probably be an RK number, or maybe even a developmental number, like a QF number. I think Raytheon used QF. I don't know what it is, but uh, let's show it off, and uh, maybe one of you guys knows. So, yes, it was at Kutztown in the second pavilion. The guy had a whole bunch of miscellaneous tubes. I don't know if he knew what much about tubes uh because his pricing was all over the place and i mean it was just in piles in boxes some new some used you know some that were clearly broken or gassy um but in any case hey i saw this and uh well i had to buy it because it's raytheon 1930s clearly but i don't know what it is it was something like 10 bucks which Mm, I, I tend not to like to pay that much for kind of a weird, uh, weird tube, but this is just a little too special. So yeah, yeah, I think it was like ten, maybe twelve dollars. I forget. Now the first thing you might say is, "Gee, that looks like an 808." 808, which I have one right here, and uh, let's open the 808 up and uh, compare the two because they are very, very similar. Incidentally, this, this 808 was one of the very first tubes that I purchased from Fair Radio Sales. So let's move you over. Zoom out a little bit. Here's an 808. Very similar. It's got a uh, spherical type bulb. I think that's called a GT bulb, I believe. And plate out the top, grid out the side. And, uh, well, however, there's a size difference, so you can pretty much tell that it is not an equivalent to an 808. So here's the 808. See, this one's made by, uh, I think it's General Electronics. They were kind of a clone tube maker in World War II, probably getting all those military contracts. They're... You don't see a whole lot of uh, General Electronics, no, not General Electric, General Electronics tubes, but they would show up from time to time, and uh, I don't think they lasted beyond the war. But yeah, there was at one point, many, many years ago, this has got to be 35 years ago, Fair Radio Sales had these new in the box for $2 a piece. So, hey, you know, it was, I was a kid back then. Neat looking tube in the catalog. Had to buy it. Two bucks. Anyway, yes, it's 808s were uh, used in late 30s and World War II gear. Kind of pushing towards the high end of HF. That was, that was the thing about the 808. Not a terribly successful tube. Didn't last past the war. They're kind of fragile. Probably were difficult to make, too. But let's look at that. Raytheon tube again. So here it is. And yeah, it looks extremely similar. Now, this one does have a ceramic base. And yes, yeah, some 808s did have a ceramic base, I believe, but I don't think they lasted too long. The early RCAs, maybe. But this is just a little bit smaller. So clearly not equivalent. As you can see, RCA, or Raytheon, sorry, but the sticker on, that's kind of a, what's a date code sticker that you find on a lot of 1930s Raytheon tubes? And yes, four-pillar radio tube. 
that was their big thing, their big selling point in the 30s. Supposedly a more rugged tube. And yes, I believe that because most tubes only have two pillars and the pillars would be... Here, let me see if I can... Do... On the stem, well, they're, they're the pillars, the, the wires that support the tube, the, uh, the, the elements of the tube. And in a lot of two-pillar tubes, so to speak, although I think it was only Raytheon that called them pillars, you can actually give the tube a whack <laughs> and it might bend. Well, not with four pillars. They are far more stable to, well, getting, getting whacked. Not that you should be whacking your tubes, but it happens. And yeah, sometimes you'll find like a, a tube with a heavy plate, like an 81 or even like a 50 or something like that, that, <laughs> that the whole structure of the tube will be bent over to the side. Well, if it's only two wires and they're in a plane, it, you know, not counting the, the filament leads and all that. Yes, there's not much support to the sides. And yeah, you sometimes can whack them back. Maybe I should do a video about that. Fixing tubes with wax. <laughs> anyway, one interesting thing about this is it doesn't have four pillars. It's got three. Let's see if we can get up there. Here we go. Very interesting way of doing things. And actually, it doesn't really look all that Raytheon. Normally, on a Raytheon four-pillar tube, the stem is kind of pinched into a cross. But this is kind of hollow and has uh, the pillars, the three pillars, kind of on this protrusion. <laughs> Very odd. Also, up top, look at the way they support the plate. I'm assuming that's a tantalum plate because I see no getter, no flashing. But look at that. The, the actual plate cap is not supporting the plate. It's got these other three upper pillars that are, well, put into the glass bulb. Very, very odd construction. And like I said, not a number to be seen other than what's on the sticker, which is probably just a date code, which I don't know how to read. So what is this thing? Any clues? Clearly late 30s, maybe mid 30s. I doubt it's World War II issue. I mean, they, I think the Raytheon stopped putting the stickers on late 30s. No numbers. Looks like an 808, but not an 808. What is it? I went through Tube Lore and also the Radio Museum site and looked at the various RKs. RK was the prefix Raytheon used for their transmitting tubes in the 30s. And I couldn't get a match. I mean, there are some that are close but from the description no they're they're much larger or something like that there's something that that kills that that possibility so what is this any got any any of you guys have any clues to what it is search your tube collection maybe you have one that's got a nice number was this maybe a developmental type that never never really went anywhere i don't know i would think that Raytheon wouldn't put that fancy sticker on a, a, a lab animal, but you never know. So anyway, if you guys have any ideas, throw it in the comments. This will, this will uh, go into my uh, tube collection, because it's a beautiful tube. It really is. And uh, I also love it when the stickers are intact for any brand, but the Raytheon stickers I really like, yes. So... Any ideas? Leave it in the comment. All right. Well, hope you liked the video. And, uh, yeah, leave comments, like, dislike, share it around, whatever. I appreciate whatever you do. And I really appreciate my patrons. And, uh, yeah, that's, I, I needed to get a video. So, hey, maybe one of you guys can help me here. So, uh, yes, I think I will talk to you later. Try and get a few more videos out soon because things have been so busy. I uh, have been slacking off. Ugh, crack the whip. All right.
Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.